In this video, we're going to learn how to make a serrated cut in Fusion 360. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, we're going to take a look at creating a serrated cut, something that you would typically see on two cylindrical pieces that need to lock together. Now, this is something that can be a little bit tricky, so we're going to talk about a couple of references that we're going to use to make this happen, and what I think is the best way to make this geometry. So we're going to get started with a new untitled document. I'm just going to use the default metric units, and we're going to create a cylinder. So using the circle tool, figure out how big you want your cylinder to be. In my case, I'm going to make the outside 100, and we can make the inside whatever we want. I'm just going to say 50, some nice round numbers. Then we're going to extrude it using E on the keyboard. Again, just pick whatever value you want. And now we have our cylinder that needs a serrated cut. Now, what I typically will see is people trying to use extrude with a taper to it or maybe sweep along a path, and that gets really tricky. So the best way that I found to do this is to create a reference sketch. So I'm going to sketch on the top of the cylinder, and I'm just going to use my line tool. So we're going to come out. A horizontal line over and then back to the origin and then one more line and find the midpoint then hit escape so this center line is going to be vertical in my case i'm going to hit escape again i'm going to turn it into construction x on the keyboard and then i want to drag this in until it snaps to the end here now the reason i want to do that is because this is going to be the reference for a plane that i'm going to create the next thing that we need to do is we need to figure out what this angle is going to be because that's going to drive the width of this line now, when you're talking about figuring out how wide this needs to be, you need to think about the overall revolution, in, in this case, 360 degrees, and then the number of serrations that you need. So if we were to do divided by 20, we would get 18. So that's 18 degrees that we need in order to have a 20 instance pattern. Let's do something a little bit bigger. So let's say that we wanted to do, uh, let's say 36 of these. So we need 10 degrees total. Now, 10 degrees total means that we need 5 degrees on each side. So we're going to go ahead and just add 5 degrees here. Because of the way that this is created, this automatically is going to adjust both sides for us because of this midpoint. And once again, it's not strictly required, but I like to make sure that that's coincident with the outside, just so that I have nice clean references in case I decide to change these dimensions. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a construction plane along a path. We'll select our mid construction line and take this all the way out to the end or 1.0. Now that we have this construction, we're going to go ahead and create a sketch on it. I'm going to project that end line. So this line right here, P on the keyboard, or you can go to create, project, include, and project, and bring that into my sketch. Then using the line tool, what we're going to do is just create a triangle. So this is going to be whatever depth you want to cut. I'm going to use my horizontal vertical constraint from that endpoint to the midpoint of my projected reference. And then my dimension is going to drive how tall this is. In this case, I'm going to say six millimeters. Now that we have this, the thing that we want to do is create a loft. Now, loft will allow us to do one critical aspect of this. We can go from this profile, in this case, a triangle all the way to this point. And that's gonna be the little bit of information that's gonna be important because that point was at the top of our reference here. So what we're doing is we're cutting this, uh, this geometry, we're cutting it out, but we're also tapering it up toward that point. Now, again, this is an important aspect of these kinds of parts and how they fit together. It's perfectly moldable. It's gonna be easy for us to manufacture and the parts will fit together well. Now that we have that geometry, we're going to create a circular pattern. Now, somewhat recently, Fusion has added all of the pattern types to uh, that just each option. So whether or not you pick a circular or you pick a pattern on path, you're going to have the option to toggle it inside of here. So we pick the feature we want, in this case, our loft. We pick the axis of revolution. It could be a cylindrical reference or, in this case, the Z axis. And then we need to pick the number of instances. In our case, it's 36 because that's how we drove that original number. You can see that the pattern perfectly matches everywhere. We'll say OK. And now we've got that perfect cut. Uh, once again, when we view it from the side, you can see that it is tapering up and away. If you happen to not need that, 
then typically what I would do is I would make a secondary plane somewhere inside, and that secondary plane would just have the other side of the triangle. It gets real tricky again because of these references, so you would need to really be able to follow these lines, and that's where the loft to a point really helps out. So at this point, if you have any questions, please let me know. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Thank you.